All right, in this video, I'm gonna tell you what the best heater is for your garage, all right? Here it is, the New Air G56 240 volt portable electric heater. There are actually a number of heaters that I'm guessing are made by the same manufacturer but have different names slapped on them, so, you know, pick one. So, that's it, video over, done. <laughs> All right, so this is a quick review and test of the new air G56 240 volt portable electric heater that I'm using for my garage, what other heater options I considered, and why I chose this one, and how to make this work if you have an existing 240 volt electric outlet, but these plug things don't match up so well. The outlet? Mm -hmm. That's where the electricity comes out of. Oh, you mean the holes? <laughs> okay, G56 stands for 5600 watts, which is about as much as you can get and still remain portable. By the way, for you Brits out there, that's about 19,000 BTU. One watt equals 3.41 BTU, so 5600 times 3.41 equals 19,100 BTU. The biggest reason I chose a 240 volt heater is that I already installed a 240 volt circuit in my garage for my EV. But after looking at all the options, I think using the 240 volt electric is still the best option. I also go through how to make this NEMA 1450R outlet work with the NEMA 630 heater plug. Why this heater? Well, let's look at the options. First option was for a 120 volt heater, but they top out at about 1500 watts, which is pretty lame for a garage. If you're standing right next to it, okay. But really, it won't heat the space up when it gets into the low 40s. Next options were propane or kerosene. The kerosene torpedoes throw out fantastic heat, like 50,000 BTU, for their size and price, but they are gassy. It's really not safe to run these without ventilation, and if you have ventilation in the winter, well, it's going to be cold. I don't know, I really don't want to leave the garage door open and be working in hot carbon monoxide gases if I don't have to. Propane is also a really good cheap solution. It throws out a ton of heat. It's really convenient. You can just hook one of these things up to your propane tank that you have for the grill and you're good to go. Once again though, you're burning gas, which means what? Ventilation. Same problem. Next up is natural gas. This is the top of the line solution. It is what most home furnaces use. It is also the most costly to purchase and install because you need a gas line and if it needs electric, it's own electric circuit. And again, because you're burning gas, it also needs to be vented to the outside. So that brings me back to 240 volt electric only heaters. 5600 watts is the most powerful heater that I found that is still portable. Next steps pretty much are 7500 watts, 10,000 watts, which will heat up to 1000 square feet and 15,000 watts, which will heat up to about 1,500 square feet. 5,600 watts requires about 23 amps, 7,500 watts requires 31 amps, 10,000 watts requires 43 amps, 15,000 watts requires almost 63 amps. I have a 50 amp circuit, so could have easily gone with the 10,000 watt and my two car garage would be seriously toasty. So why not? Well, I'm just not out here that often in the winter and they are pricey in about the $500 range. I also tested the small one out last year and it was just fine. If it gets down into the 20s outside, I can just put it somewhere facing in my direction and it's perfectly capable. Also, I believe I paid about $120 for this. Okay, so let's say you have an EV and a 240 volt outlet already installed in your garage. Well, congrats, you're like this close to being done. I know for a Tesla, they use a NEMA 1450 receptacle and these electric heaters use the NEMA 630. Well, if you want the super quick solution, just buy this adapter. Unfortunately, you're kind of stuck with six to seven feet of cord length. Now, if you want to save a few dollars and add some length to that cord, build your own. You'll need this plug and receptacle and some cord with three wires, eight gauge minimum. If you're going more than a few feet, you would be better off with six gauge. Then just follow this wiring diagram. Yeah, I removed that one blade for the white wire as it's unnecessary for this. And that's it. You've got a way better garage heater solution. As a matter of fact, you've got the best garage heater. So the heater comes with this NEMA 630P. P stands for plug, R stands for receptacle. So anyway, this is a NEMA 630. However, typical 240 volt electric outlets, uh, especially for electric vehicles, come with the 1450. At least they do for the Tesla. I'm kind of assuming that they do for everything else. I'm not sure, but the same kind of principles apply anyway. 
you might end up with a different plug because you had a different application when they installed your 240 volt electric line, or maybe you did it yourself. And it's different than what these guys had intended when they put their plugs together, okay? What I ended up with was putting together my own converter adapter with an extension on it. This adds about four extra feet of cable. I used a six gauge cable because that is what I used here. And this, this is about a hundred foot run all the way to my electric box in the other corner of the house. Uh, I do plan on putting another video on that, on how I installed this sucker. Anyway, what this does now is you've got the 1450 plug on this end, which matches up with the 1450 receptacle here. Oh, again, I noted this is unneeded. This is for a white wire. We don't need four wires here. We only need three. So that guy plugs in there. You've got the 630 receptacle here. This guy plugs in here. Boom, ready to go. Again, what's nice about making your own adapter is that you can make it a little bit longer. This, uh, I installed this uh, a little bit further off the ground so you, you know, you lose some length if you want to run this heater somewhere on the ground. So it comes with about a six foot cord. And if I wanted to run it way over here, because I'm working on my car on this side of the garage, uh, well, you can see I'm actually stretching that a little bit more than I than I should. Uh, now I can do that. And actually, now that I look at this, I probably should have made this cord a little bit longer even. I thought four feet was going to give me everything I needed, but um, it's not as good as it could be. I might actually make that extension cord a little bit bigger. Again, if you're using six gauge cable, you can run that thing pretty far, especially with this heater. This heater, again, it pulls about 23 amps. And 23 amps, you could probably get away with eight gauge cable and, and still run a, a number of feet with it. However, uh, where I really plan to run this heater is up on this shelf like I did for the test. You know, I made that little shelf just because it's kind of out of the way in the back of the garage and this may look kind of bad because it's a little dangerous oh it's kind of close and contacting the the, the bike over here but the outside uh, chassis of this heater is it stays like completely cool i mean it's barely warm even after it's run for a long time there's just a lot of uh space in between those heating coils and the outer case there so and the fan blows pretty hard, so the heat isn't staying there. The heat's getting blown out of the fan, so there's really no concern there. So anyway, when I was putting this together, while I did think I'm going to be putting this on the ground, my main intention was being able to leave it just up there on the shelf, and I wanted to be able to easily run a cord to the outlet there. Anyway, I do have room to run this around a little bit more so that when it gets really cold in here, Again, if it gets into the 20s in this garage, I can run this heater for a long time and easily get the temperature up 20 or so degrees, 20, 30 degrees. Not that big of a deal. However, it would be nice to have the heater a little closer so it can be pointing and really blowing that hot air, you know, on me. <laughs> As I said, I don't spend a lot of time in here, in the winter anyway. Uh, you know, when I really work on things in the car, it's usually in the summertime. And um, if it's super cold, I'll just wait for a warmer day. It's really not that big of a deal for me. However, if you want a bigger heater, you know, just go up to the 7,500, go up to the 10,000 watt. The only difference there, again, is that it's not gonna be as portable as this one. This one's great because you just pick it up, move it around, build a little shelf for it. I could have just used pegboard hooks and hooked it onto something else. It's really nice. The other options, you know, you've got a, a Put some space together, you know, maybe up in the corner of, of your garage uh, up high, which is fine. You know, and then you got to run a, a longer extension or maybe get the uh, outlet closer to it. That's the only issue. But, you know, it can be done. It's really not that big of a deal. I, I still, you know, just love these 240 volt electric heaters. I really think these are the best option. Okay, so the controls are pretty basic for this thing. 
when it's on auto that means you use a thermostat you know there's no temperature controls here but high means it's going to be on blowing heat all the time anything in between is basically whatever temperature it's at so if you're comfortable with where the room is you start backing this off until the unit turns off and then it will maintain the temperature in the room at that setting pretty simple if you turn it on the fan is going to blow constantly it's not going to shut off whereas in auto it will turn on or off to to maintain that temperature that you set that's really it pretty simple all right pretty cold outside about 35 um, about 48 in here just kicked on the garage heater put it on high auto I don't remember this case getting hot last year uh, when I tried this out and um, you know I'm just I didn't have this bike here or anything like that I just built this little shelf little heater shelf for it and I don't think it's gonna get too hot for this bike tire or actually that's all that's really touching it but I don't think it'll get too hot let's see though 710 see how long it takes to get the temperature up in here okay running about half an hour now I'm gonna shut her down not that loud but um you know like a about like that size fan on high it's about what it sounds like you know it's not like any super quiet fan it's been about half an hour yeah 743 what was it 710 so about 30 minutes or so 33 minutes and we are up about 55 56 degrees which feels way better in here uh two car garage insulated on both sides this is really just shares one wall with the house uh, most of this is not connected at all also ceilings are high this is about a ten and a half foot ceiling so uh, there is a little more space maybe than uh, most garages so not bad at all I like it and you know again electric there's no fumes any of the gas type heaters in that it's gonna smell like something you know you're burning something and it, they say that it's safe but man it how 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 really is it that safe i don't think so not as safe as this this is just really just heating up elements heating up air so um nice so please like and subscribe i've got a few other things coming first off how did i put that 240 volt electric line in here all right video on that uh whole makeover garage makeover video coming soon i keep saying that also Garage door opener, all new, super cool, coming soon.